Once again, welcome back. It is a trip back in time, as once again we are back in EWR land, Extreme Warfare Revenge. And I just wanted to make the announcement here that even though the videos on EWR have done in my opinion, better than I thought, but I just wanted to say that I'm not sure of the future for EWR, because at this point, uh, I should be getting back to recording TEW videos in the next couple of days, so I don't know what the future holds for, t if for, sorry, too many acronyms, I don't know what the future holds for EWR. But what I do know is, if you guys still want to see EWR videos every now and again, I would not have a problem with doing that for, uh, doing that for you. Putting up a video every now and again for EWR. Um, as far as, you know, just giving you a little glimpse into where I am, I am in the WCW in the WWF. I believe I'm in 1998. I'm not sure, but I think I am. Uh, as you can tell, the gimmick generator is once again open. Uh, let's. I just. Uh, I just actually noticed this. Uh, currently, we are a financially solid company. We turned the corner and made money last month. Overall, I would say you're doing a below average job. Huh. That's kind of depressing. I thought I was doing a better job. I thought I was doing a good job. But I guess I'm not. So, that's kind of a... It's kind of depressing. I'm kind of kind of disappointed about that. So, let's just see. Let's just see how things are going. Steve Austin's the top guy in the company. Shawn Michaels... Shawn Michaels is number two? What? When did Rock become number one? I don't know. Let's go see. Uh, oh, wow. Ric Flair's contract's expiring. Shalvo, Rey Mysterio, Juventud Guerrera, Jim Dietheart, Bader's unemployed. Oh, yeah, because I just released him. Uh, Taz, Rob, Sandman, you know, some of the ECW's top guys. I wouldn't be surprised if Gordy's in Japan. I think Gordy's in Japan. Oh no, he's in the new company, Smoky Mountain Rebirth. So, that's good for Gordy. Um, just coming here, I just wanted to see... Oh my god! When did The Rock become so good? Owen's in 96. Where's, where's Sean? Sean's in 102? Holy moly! Maybe I should turn Rocky babyface and... Maybe I should turn Rocky babyface and have him feud with Sean. I don't know. That would be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, but unfortunately, things like this happen even when positive things like that, uh, like uh, The Rock becoming a top star, happened. Cactus Jack got injured a few weeks ago, uh, which basically killed his feud with Chainsaw Charlie against against uh, the Road Dog and Billy Gunn for the tag team titles. Which was very unfortunate. Um, speaking of that, let's go check this out. Um, what feuds just ended? Well, Farouk and Ken Shamrock just ended. Uh, the Legion of Doom and Rock and Roll Express. Austin and Austin and Michaels, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Well, this one's cl closing in on a, on, on a fit. I was gonna say closing in on a finish. Closing in on an ending. And I think this one might be two. No, this one's a little further away than the other one, but, yeah. Uh, this one just started, and this one just started too, because I needed somebody, I needed somebody to, well, basically, the Legion of Doom beat 
Rock and Roll Express, and they then moved into a feud with the New Age Outlaws because I needed somebody basically to take, take, take. I needed somebody to feud with the Outlaws. Not take, nothing about taking, just feuding with the Outlaws because nobody was feuding with the Outlaws, and I felt like, okay, what the hell, why is nobody feuding with the Outlaws? Okay. Because they're champions, and I feel like champions should have feuds, and yes, I know what you're going to say, then why is Shawn Michaels not in the feud? Well, I kind of just mentioned that because Shawn just finished his feud. Um, so now, looking here, you got... Merchandise sold by people. I don't know why Hunter's so far down, but, you know, like, I don't know what the differentiation is if Hunter and Sean would be selling the same merchandise. Um, you know, just to give you an idea of, because I want to say I started in August, so I've done about four months. Nothing, not much has changed, uh, with this with this season. Yes, if you don't know about the NWA's involvement in the, in the WWF in 1998, um, well, basically, Jimmy, uh, James E. Cornett was still a part of the WWF and wanted to try and do something with the NWA, so they let him. And so they brought the NWA tag team titles with the Rock and Roll Express, the North American title with Jeff Jarrett, and the NWA champion Dan Severn, who, yes, was actually the NWA champion at the time, into the company. But as you can tell, with the fact that Jeff was the most o over member or the most successful member in WWF, not much happened with this uh, little thing during this time period. You know, this uh, invasion type thing. Not much happened during this time. So, yeah. I'm just uh, moving stuff around because I'll say this. If this video can get at least 10 views or 8 views, if this video can get at least 8 views, I'll keep doing EWR. If not, then I may still keep doing it, but not as much. Because yes, uh, because yes, my computer is back that had, uh, that had e uh, TEW on it, so this temp computer is not needed, or this, um, uh, I don't want to say this temp computer because I'm going to switch and put TEW on this computer anyway. So if anything, my laptop is going to be a temp computer or my other computer is going to be a temp computer. Um, but this temp game, this temporary game is going to not be needed anymore. You know, this temporary game is not going to be needed anymore, so... It's, it's okay, you know? Owen, Rocky. Well, I'm going to do what I normally do when I play this game and record a video for all of you, and that is I'm going to book a show for EWR just to show you how different, in a way, um, well, in my opinion, I'm going to show you how different this game is, I mean this season rather, how different this season is compared to other seasons that I've done since I started recording this game. Oh shit, I gotta stop using my keyboard. I really gotta stop using my keyboard. <sighs> So, for once, the North American champion is actually going to be feuding with someone. And you may ask, okay, the North American champion was feuding with somebody, but why isn't the NWA champion feuding with somebody? 
Well, because I feel like, as the NWA champion, I guess I just feel a little strange putting the NWA champion into a feud knowing that he doesn't work for me. You know, and just begging the question, why the hell am I booking the NWA champion in a feud? You know? Why the hell should I book the NWA champion in a feud? And, you know, I know people would say, well, because you want to make it ma you want to make it matter. Yeah, but you're telling me that, sorry, I'm not clicking right, uh, but you're telling me that me booking a, a, a title in a way that, uh, in a way that Uh, well, try, um, me trying to make a title mean something that a lot of fans may attribute to the competition or past competition without elaborating on the current standing of the NWA. Like, basically what I'm saying is I don't know if I could give the game, I mean the... Like, I know I could book this right in the EWR. I mean, TEW. And maybe in the future I will. But at this point right now, I don't know if I am... I don't want to say that I'm capable... I don't want to say the word if I'm capable or... Or not capable, or what have you, as far as booking this game, booking in this game, because I think I'm as capable as the game lets, you know, as capable as the game lets me be. Because, you know, being fair with this game, it does. It does warrant some, some, you know, restrictions. Because this was the first, I want to say it was the first game from uh, my favorite gaming provider, that being, that being, um, Great Oak Software. And I apologize, my cat is being very nosy and not really letting me record because she keeps jumping on my desk and getting in the way. So if you hear purring in the background, that is why. Because she is very annoying sometimes. But as she has knocked a lot of shit around behind me <laughs> and is now smelling me I'm gonna stop actually uh, talking about my cat as now I'm trying to figure out the best main event possible for the show and just one little thing about my cat she is now laying on my arm go figure mmm You know what? I'm gonna go with my first idea of Baruch against Sean Waltman. And I'm also actually hoping that before I finish uh that before I finish recording this, I may be able to call some people up in the card and show you what happens when that uh aspect of the game is Touched, touched upon because that's one thing that I haven't done since I started recording this is actually alter anybody's status within the company. 
Um, so I'm just setting up this promo because Kane is gonna start the main is gonna be booked in the main event. And yes, I know, I know, I know. You're having a heel or two heels win back to back. This isn't WWE. You know, this is. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is how I want to book the match, not how the match would actually be booked. I mean, it, this is how I would want to. I'm just having fun, is basically what I'm trying to say. As Taker attacks Kane, setting up what I'm hoping to be their blow off at the next pay per view. Um, so Rocky and Owen had a segment, got a 92. Mark Merrow actually, uh, Mark Merrow actually gets a win, and I say actually gets a win is because I really have not done the best job of booking baby faces in this season. Mark Merrow gets on the shtick for the first time in this season. Yes, for the first time in four months, I've actually booked Mark Merrow in a talking segment. And for those of you who may actually care, my cat is gone. She walked out of the room, so uh, my arm is free to move around again. I kind of hope I kind of am very happy when my cat is not in the room because I don't know. She gets in the way. Let's put it that way. Um, now back to our regular regularly scheduled programming. Uh, Triple H and Lenny Lane. Yes, Triple H actually defended the European... Uh, let me actually talk. The European title. Why? Because it's the European title, and why the fuck not? And he obviously won. And then he talked about Ken Shamrock. And here's another reason why I like the game. is because of a random-ass commentary from the writers, I guess you could call them, uh, saying things, well, that's just neat. So, um, I mean, I guess you could say it's a match helping the tag team division because Marsh and Thrasher face the Truth Commission. Why? Because both of them need wins, both of them need to be credible, like credible, and with the fact that heels are the tag team champions, it's been benef more beneficial for me to have baby faces uh, be credible than heels. Not that I'm going to say that I'm going to job the heels out. I'm just saying that the baby faces are more needed now with the heels as champions. Either way, we move backstage with Farouk, Rocky Maivia, Kama Mustafa, D'Lo Brown, and Mark Henry. Uh, in the nation locker room just talking about, you know, nation business. Farouk beats Sean Waltman. Um... Yeah, in the semi-main. Paul Bearer and Kane are out for a promo. And Paul Bearer gains popularity or overness in the segment, bashing The Undertaker. And unfortunately, a very lackluster main event. Kind of surprising. I mean, not kind of surprising, in my opinion, but we still got a good show. So thanks, to, thanks in part to Owen and the Nation, and also thanks in part to Hunter. And Paul Bearer and Kane. But either way, this was, you know, uh, Monday Night Raw. Compared to Nitro, we sucked. Animal wants to work with Fatu. Why, I don't know. Let's just look around. Uh, minimum overness. Let's just say anybody over a 79 should be, in my opinion, at least an upper mid Carter. Kane's an 81. Ken is an 87. Uh, doesn't look like, unfortunately... It unfortunately doesn't look like I'm going to be promoting anybody. I'm not going to promote... You know what? Just for the sake of showing you, I'll promote Yokozuna. Basically, it just comes up with an email saying, with him being thankful that he's getting pushed up the card. And the only other thing I can say is unhappy. 
Why is Steve Austin unhappy? Honestly, I haven't the faintest idea. Because usually, at least I can use Owen Hart as an, an example, Owen has been asking me for months to work with to work with Shawn Michaels. But unfortunately for Owen, he's been in a feud with The Rock. And I say unfortunately for Owen because he's been in a feud with The Rock. Um, and as you can tell, The Rock has been, you know, a little frustrated with me. Sean's been a little frustrated with me. Taker, I think Kane falls into that category too. Because basically how this game works is if they tell you that they want to be booked against somebody and you don't book them against somebody... They get mad. So, you know, basically the fact that I don't book people sometimes against people that they want to work against, like he wants to work against Chainsaw Charlie for some god heaven reason. Why I didn't book Hunter and Chainsaw in a feud, I don't know, and to just say Ken Shamrock for an Intercontinental title feud, go figure, but, eh. Always the Intercontinental Champion. You know? Can always plug, uh... Yeah, see? I told you. W one more segment with them and they would, uh... They would be able to blow off. Um... August... I mean, for the Attitude Era, that's a really good run. But, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I mean, it would make sense to have Owen win and then have him go into a feud with... Michaels, but how would that work with the Intercontinental title? Because having him lose and then go into a feud with Michaels really wouldn't make sense. Because how would it make sense to have somebody lose to the Intercontinental Champion and then go into a feud with the World Champion? See, this is what I do when I don't have TEW. Um, I get wrapped up in this game because I just love wrestling. Um, hmm. Well... I guess the best way to close it off is this. I likely am going to be releasing Steve Austin, and I likely will be continuing playing this season. Whether or not I continue playing this season and recording it is up to you. Because I want to hear from you. Let me know down in the comment section below if you're liking this EWR... Uh time travel-esque series where we go back to 2003 and play the first uh, published game from Adam Ryland and Grey Dog Software. If not, then I'll just keep with my favorite game, Total Extreme Wrestling. But if you'd like to see just, you know, just the idea of mixing up content like I mentioned in a previous video and gaining the ability to put up more content, if you just like the uh, the break from the normal, I guess you could say. Let me know in the comment section below, and I have no, because I have no problem continuing to play this game, because I thoroughly enjoy playing this game. Even, you know, totally ignoring the age of the game and the, you know, some issues that I have with the game, like the morale. Um, totally ignoring that. I thoroughly enjoy the game and wouldn't mind continuing to play, so let me down down in the comment section below. But if you don't want to leave a comment, you can always leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. Till next time. Later.